Hey, what's going on? I'm Sam. Welcome back to Lightite, where we empower light ideas. Speaking of which, do you have a favorite way to do lighting design? Well, have I got an idea for you. Let's go check out the lighting features and the well building standard and see what they have to say about how you can design with light. No one likes a cold, dark, or dreary building, let alone an office space. But I bet you if it felt like you were sitting in a park or playing at a theme park all day, you'd probably stay there and work all day. Just ask anyone that works at Google. Thankfully, the International Well Building Institute, formed in 2014, created a set of design guidelines geared toward health and wellness of building occupants. While they're not easy to achieve, they're doable, and when done right, results in a space looking like this. It shouldn't be a surprise that lighting is a part of this. After all, what would you do if all you did was walk into a dark room? The well building guidelines are ever evolving. The most established version, version one, has 13 features on lighting. Let's take a look at the three most complex ones. To help us break down the details of each feature, let's bring in someone who's well spent a lot of time around the well building guidelines and a lot of time in lighting design as well. Meet my friend, Ryan Walker, who's currently a senior illuminating engineer at Acuity Brands Lighting. What's going on, Ryan? Come on over, bud. Hey, Sam, how's it going? It's good to see you, man. Hey, everyone, it's good to see you too. Well, as you know, I've been a lighting designer for the last five years, most recently at Davis Partnership Architects, and that's where I got my first exposure to the Welt Building Institute and trying to apply it to lighting design. Today, I actually am applying it in a different way to luminaire design and how luminaires can actually try and achieve well building from a different side of things. Would you agree that it's important to achieve the well building standard today? Of course. Why do you think so? Because making sure that we are comfortable and well, feel good in our spaces is important. Well, there you have it, folks. It's pretty simple. Who doesn't want to feel good in a space? I tell you what, Ryan, do me a favor. Break down that first feature we talked about, feature 53. Feature 53, visual lighting design, is about providing brightness management strategies in or between spaces. When you do this, it ensures that there isn't too much contrast, which might make seeing tasks difficult. The intent is to support our ability to see tasks clearly by setting a threshold for adequate light levels and requiring luminance to be balanced with and across indoor spaces. The objective here is to provide certain e-luminance values on task planes similar to IES guidelines for a variety of applications. Luminance and e-luminance are two different things. The easiest way to remember one from the other is illuminance is how much light is actually hitting a surface. Luminance is how much light you are actually perceiving on a surface. Creating that balanced design can become tricky when creating layers of lighting in a space for visual interest or emphasis and still maintaining balanced luminances with less than a 10 to 1 ratio on tasks and ceilings. This is a good place to let your lighting designer shine. No pun intended. I suppose that makes sense, doesn't it, Ryan? It's good to have balanced light in the room. I mean, it would be hard to see without light, period. It's a good question. But you bet it is. The well standard isn't the end-all be-all for lighting level recommendations. There are a whole set of human factors to consider along with recommended practices published by the IES. Lighting should always be approached holistically. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you. Having a good holistic lighting design is something that's definitely important. Do me a favor, walk me through feature 54. Feature 54 is focused on circadian lighting design with an intent to support circadian health through electric and natural lighting design. Light is a key driver of our sleep-wake cycle and circadian system, which regulates physiological rhythms throughout the body's tissue and organs. The more recently discovered intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells are the eye's non-image forming photoreceptors that keep our circadian rhythms in sync. 
And so the well building requirements are intended to provide enough lighting and spaces to stimulate our ganglion cells and promote alertness during the day, or conversely, to limit lighting levels to promote preparation for rest at nighttime. Yes, I'm talking to you who's watching this on your iPhone right before bed. This is important. In design, it can create a challenge as the equivalent melanopic lux, or EML, needed in spaces as outlined in well, requires either higher light levels than normal, cooler color temperatures, or a combination of the two than is what is typically desired in a lighting design. Wow, that sure is a mouthful, isn't it, Ryan? Is circadian lighting something that you think should be on every project? Not just yet. That, that said, it is certainly important. But as scientists continue to study the effects of light and our human biology, more research will be published, which will allow these standards to be better defined. If it is published, but not that well defined, how hard is it to design and comply with this feature today? It's, it's really kind of a challenge. Um, one of the parts that's, that's a problem is there's some ambiguity in the code. For instance, let's just talk about classrooms. So in classrooms, you have to meet these EML requirements for 75% of the desks, which that's a little bit ambiguous. Where are the desks placed in the room? I don't know. On top of that, it has to be at a level of four feet above the floor on a flat plane surface aimed directly back at your eye. So like literally right in front of you. Think about like a computer screen there. But that, that could be at any direction, which wherever in the spaces, we gotta think about this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction. Like all, all of the directions in the space. So how is a lighting designer supposed to to, to accommodate for this and, and incorporate those into their calculations. Um, anyhow, so you got source A, then you got source B, right? But I have to know exactly what the spectral data of A Bottom line, hire a lighting designer. Well, Ryan, hiring a lighting designer sounds like a good idea. I'm excited to see what comes from all that research, but we'll probably have to sit tight for just a little bit longer. Do me a favor though, walk me through feature 55. Let's quickly define glare as light that can cause visual discomfort, known as discomfort glare, or fatigue, visual impairment, and even injury, which can be referred to as disability glare and can be attributed to either direct or reflected glare. In the case of glare caused by electric light sources, lamps should be shielded based on their luminance. It sounds like feature 55 focuses on glare and reducing it or eliminating it altogether. Is that right, Ryan? Pretty much. Feature 55 specifically addresses the fact that glare can impact our visual acuity and overall environment. So it should be limited if not avoided altogether. But since each space is different, these are some recommendations to minimize it for any direct or indirect lighting applications. One example that's easy to understand is the width of a linear light source. Take for instance this 2 inch versus 6 inch width slot system with the same amount of delivered light. While there are the same amount of lumens coming from each source, the surface brightness calculation complies on the 6 inch fixture but does not on the 2 inch fixture due to the aperture size there becomes an increased luminous intensity due to the smaller aperture which then becomes glary. Each system is unique though, so it should always be calculated for each individual project. And you know what? It's been a lot of fun to have you here, Ryan, to help us understand what the Well Building Institute has written for its lighting features, all 13 of them. Well, at least we covered the top three. Thanks for having me, Sam. I'm definitely passionate about this kind of stuff. Well, that's obvious, to say the least, isn't it? That's a recap of 53, 54, and 55. Head on over to the website at that link to get a full breakdown and learn more about how to comply. If you have questions, shoot us an email right there, and we'll do our best to get back to you. And if you just like lighting and you like this stuff and want to see more of it, do me a favor. Hit that button right on Ryan's face and subscribe to LightEye and I'll send you my next slide idea. See ya. <laughs>